Hey y'all, this is Tanetta. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well. Yes, I'm still your relationship coach at Speak Your Truth and your bedroom candy boutique consultant. But this morning, as you all know, I love to make stuff and love to well, cook it in my crock pot a lot lately and stuff like that and baking and things like that. So I want to make sure I brought y'all this recipe this morning. It's not going to be fully done just to let you know. Um, but it will be um, cooking all day on low. I put it that way. It's called five ingredient French onion chicken in the crock pot. I guess it's my name because there's really no name for it. But that, that's the name of it. And it's very, very simple, y'all. Especially if you all have a family, you're trying to, you're working or you, or you have a business that you're away from home, you're running, that kind of thing. And can't come home and cook really fast and get foods in the evening. Like I said, this is definitely a great meal for you all. It only has, of course, five ingredients. And it's just um, chicken breast. I think there's like four to three to four or five, depends on how many you have in your family, chicken breast um, to put like on the bottom of the crock pot. I have, um, I didn't take out the chicken breast. I took out the um, chicken breast tenderloins. To me, they're the same thing. It's like a small pack, so I'm going to put that entire pack in there. And then one whole sliced onion. One, um, here's my onion here. I just went and got that this morning from Schnucks. Then there's one pack of this French onion soup, soup and dip mix, I guess is what it's called. Then there's um, one can of French onion soup, the condensed soup. And this dish right here, I got that from Schnucks also. Um, and of course the crock pot, and then I got the Swiss cheese, the aged Swiss cheese. And that doesn't go on there until later on today, just to let y'all know. Because this is a meal that you make in the crock pot all day for eight hours on low or four hours um, on high and then you actually um, have to take out the chicken once you, once, it, once, you get, well, once you get home tonight take out the chicken put it into a casserole pan um, and of course put like about a third of the juice that's in the crock pot on the, in the pan as well uh, put it in the oven for less than five minutes until the cheese melts and then it's done so that's how French onion soup is traditionally made with the cheese on top it has either Swiss or that I can't pronounce this word, but it's G-R-U-Y-E-R-E, -E, that kind of cheese. <laughs> but it has either one, y'all, on top of it. That's how it's traditionally made. But like I said, this has chicken in it just to make it a little bit more hearty. But other than that, like I said, the only thing you have to do is really put the chicken into the crock pot, cut up the onion, which I'm about to do right now, and throw the other stuff in there, and then it's on its way to being cooked, y'all. That's it. But like I said, this is definitely an easy meal for anybody's family. I'm getting my chicken together, y'all, to put in the crock pot. Ah, as soon as I get it open, I can't, there we go. Can't get it open. <laughs> I just got a little pack of Tyson chicken. I don't know how many pounds. I guess maybe one pound. I have no idea, y'all. Uh oh, Lord have mercy. Ah, I'm trying to break it, this pack in half because <laughs> it's frozen still. And I'm sure it was still cooked frozen, y'all. No worries. <laughs> Because mine is going to be frozen this morning, so. Because I didn't take it out until like midnight, almost 1 o'clock this morning. It's like, Lord, I forgot the chicken. <laughs> and like I said, I, uh, I was making, um, hold on, y'all, give me one second. Well, I can still talk. Because y'all know, well, some of you all may know that I was making, um, of course, crock pot meals a lot. Um, the past, like, several months, um, well, I guess several months, I guess you can say. But I kind of slacked off, and I'm getting back into it. Um because I can't eat anything else out at this present point. <laughs> so I'm just like a Lord of mercy. And it's not like we eat out every day at all, no. But I just don't like eating out at all, really. I mean, in the past I did a few times, maybe, maybe a month or every two months or so, but not, it wasn't a, um, a habit at all. So like I said, definitely that's what, um, oh, Lord, okay. But like I said, this definitely is an easy meal that you can make. For your family. Now I know I want to also talk about um once I get back over to cup this onion, y'all. Give me one second. But like I said, this is definitely a meal that's easy to be made for your family. And I have other crock pot meals, y'all. It's actually on my um sweets, eats, and treats. It's Tanetta Sweets, Eats and Treats. I believe it's what no, it's something like that, y'all. Sweets, Eats and Crafts or something like that. I think that's what it's called. Um here on Facebook, I have some of those other recipes on there as well. I made lasagna for the first time, veg, veggie lasagna. I've made, um, me and my guy have made that clam chowder. Was it clam chowder? Yeah, it was clam chowder. We made some kind of uh, broccoli, potatoes. We, we, we made all kind of like, like little things in there. Uh oh, so let me see. 
So the onions go next. But like I said, I want to talk to y'all about this morning as well because I know I'm here on this video trying to rush too. But I'm here on this video. But I, um, this past week, um, and it's, I, I've had this conversation many a times with several different elders that I've, of course, talked to um, with like home business and things like that. I was visiting somebody's home this week, one of my clients, and um, of course, they were trying to apply for Medicaid and all those kind of things, which that's something that I do as well, help clients apply for Medicaid and help them fill out the application and stuff like that and um, so that they can get some other benefits like adult daycare and because the clients I have right now, they're more seniors, um, disabled seniors, that kind of thing as well. And like I said, I had um, conversations that I've had many times with many other clients that I've had as well, um, especially when it comes to applying for the Medicaid, um, Social Security and all that kind of stuff. And I know, of course, whoever, anybody that's on here, of course, whether you're listening now or listening to the replay, anybody that has worked, I guess I put it that way, we have to realize, um, of course, I know you hear folks talking about the benefits that you'll get when you're a senior and all that kind of stuff, or when you retire. I'm not looking to, well, I mean, yes, I will retire one day, yes, probably not from a job, but yes, I will retire. But what I'm talking about is... This, this gentleman and his wife, of course, was letting me know that they've, of course, worked all their lives and they're um, thinking they're going to get all these benefits when, when, it, when, when they became a senior. Of course, they got SSI and all that kind of stuff. Um, no pensions or anything like that, but SSI, dis disability. And they were just letting me know because they had, of course, um, I think it was about 3000 in income a month. And we know that that's not a lot, of course. That's a lot a lot more than a lot of the seniors that I have back there that they live on. Because most of them live on way like, like less than half of that a month. And um, like I told him, he was just kind of, I, I can't say he was upset, but he was just wondering why the Medicaid system is the way that it is here in Missouri. And like I told him, because we were filling out the application and there was nothing in there about like your illnesses, what kind of, because he, he was thinking that it was based off illnesses and what you have going on and your disability, like I told him, is not. It's based off the money that you bring in. <clears throat> the state wants to know how much money you're bringing in because they feel if, they, if, if you can pay for your, um, if, you, if you make over, let me see, what is it, 904 a month? $904 a month. If you make more than that, they said that you can pay for your Medicaid insurance. And he was just wondering why he paid into the system all these years, and now he's not even even able to even qualify for any of the benefits. And like I told him, yeah, I know a lot of people, like I, like, like, like I say, he's not the first that has actually told me that, and we've had this conversation with. That happens a lot. I put it that way all the time. For those who, of course, are working out here, paying into Social Security and all these kind of things, yeah, you probably get Social Security, but if you're looking to get Medicaid so that you can have other services like home health care or adult daycare or um, some nursing care and that kind of thing as well, like I said, you won't qualify for it, especially if you make too much a month, make over $904 a month after you retire and that kind of thing. Like I said, that's just the reality that a lot of us face. A lot of folks who are working or who have worked up with in their lives face. And like I'm bringing y'all, I'm talking to y'all about that my eyes are burning, y'all. <laughs> Says you got my eyes closed. Jesus Christ. Woo! Woo! Let me wash my hands, y'all. Like I said, I'm bringing y'all, well, hold on. So I may have to, oh God. <laughs> my eyes are burning. Oh Lord, y'all, my eyes are burning so bad. Oh Lord Jesus, all right. But like I said, I'm bringing that, this talk to y'all this morning because I know some of us out there, of course, still working. Some of us out there may have a part-time income that kind of, or side income, that kind of thing as well. I'm just here to make sure that I'm telling y'all this, and I'm sure other folks have told y'all this as well. If you're working, that's fine. I don't care what you do. Everybody's not cut up to have a job or, I mean, have a business or work a business or that kind of thing. They're more apt to be employees and better at being employed than, than running a business. Some that may not have the master, it just depends on what's going on. But like I said, I'm just here to let you all know, but given all that, just know that if you are working, have any kind of work income, if that's your main source of income, make sure that you get another stream of income. And no, I'm not on here to sell your bedroom candy at all. I'm just trying to make sure that you know that you need to have you another stream of income. It's so many times, I don't care what you do, if you sell jewelry, if you sell bedroom candy, if you have a business that you're doing coaching, if you have a business you're doing baking, whatever you're doing, make sure that you have at least another stream of income. Preferably a stream of income that's more of, well, I'm into real estate as well. So 
So, I mean, that's going to be at some point a passive income stream for me as well. Yes, I may have to go out and check on things, that kind of thing at all. But, of course, like I said, be more passive than me actually working an actual 9 to 5 and going to do this and spending all my time at work and all these kind of things. Um, but, like I said, definitely make sure that you have some type of other stream of income because you don't want to get to your, your, your retirement age or whatever age you want to retire at especially if you're an employee and not have another stream of income and then have to depend on the state and the government and all this kind of stuff for your, um, oh, let me, let me just show y'all what this looks like. Hold on. I'm trying to see if I can switch it. Yeah, I can. Okay. That's what it looks like in the crock pot, y'all. I'm just turning this on low and it's going to cook all day until I get home. And like I said, I'll show y'all that part later on too. But getting back to what I was saying, y'all, um, you don't want to, uh, of course, have just, 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 just retire and have just that one stream of income. Um, and knowing that, like I'm telling you now, when you get older, thinking you're going to have Medicaid and if you need home health care, if you get illnesses or things like that, you're not going to qualify for those things. Majority of the time, if you're, of course, working and you have worked, you're gonna be, your income is going to be way more than what the um this on care what usually what state you live in it really doesn't matter but your income is going to be way more than what that state allows for the free medicaid services i have clients who are wanting to of course obtain medicaid because they of course are trying to apply for home health care meaning that they need they're older they have health issues and they need somebody to come in to of course assist in taking care of them uh, whether it's a family member or somebody from our agency and that kind of thing and like i say a lot of the ones that i've talked to not a lot but some of the ones i've talked to um, in the last what, few years, they, of course, like I said, cannot even apply for Medicaid because they make too much according to Medicaid standards. They make more than $904 a month. And for those who make $1,500, $2,000, that kind of thing, there is something called a spin down with Medicaid. So they feel that if you make over that $904 a month, whatever you're making over it, say if it's $2,000, that means that you have to pay $1,000. $94 in, in order to activate your Medicaid every single month. Nobody can usually take them that amount of money out of their income every month when they're trying to pay for a mortgage and still paying on a vehicle or trying to live, pay bills, get medications, all those kind of things every month just to have some Medicaid. Like I said, that's what a lot of, what's not, not, I can't say a lot, but several and my clients that I've tried to, of course, obtain services for that kind of thing, that's what they're coming up against. And they all tell me the same thing. They have worked all their lives and they have put into this system for Social Security and all these kind of things. Paying, I guess, of course, the feds, you know, they always take out taxes and all that kind of stuff. That's what it goes towards majority of the time. Social Security, defense and um, med I guess like the Medicaid, I guess like the state Medicaid, food stamps, that kind of thing, those types of programs, some of that money goes towards that too. Um, like I said, a lot of them, of course, are upset because they paid into the system, but then when they get to their old age, that kind of thing, they can't even qualify for anything. All they have is their, if they have a pension from their job, if not, then they'll have social security, disability, or whatever kind they have. And that's not, what, about nine, ten, I mean, $1,000, $1,200 a month? That's not enough for anybody to live on at all. But according to Medicaid, of course, it's way too much, I guess I put it that way. And like I said, he was just upset that, he, didn't keep, that he, he can't even get any other services. If he wanted to, of course, go to adult daycare, anything, him, him or his wife, he, in other classes I've had, he had to pay for that out of his pocket. That, those services are high as hell. Going to nursing facilities, nursing homes, all these kind of things are hospitalizations. Yes, Medicare will pay for some of that. Not Medicaid, but Medicare will pay for some of that. I think it's the Part B, the hospitalization and the office visits and stuff like that. But when you're talking about extended care, facilities, um, physical therapy, all these types of things going on, Medicare does pay for some of that stuff, but most times you have a copay, if, if they even cover it. But usually if you have Medicaid, they'll usually cover all of that. And like I said, that of course cuts down on some of the bills that the seniors and those who are disabled have. But like I said before, I, I, I know I've seen this, I've griped at this a long time. Some of y'all may be hearing this for the first time though, but I've always said that because I'm of course working right now as well. And I know that I have to create, I have to, but like, like I heard from, I don't know if y'all know, know who Neo Date, well, you probably don't, but he's one of the guys that I follow, one of the C, um, the, um, the circle of CEOs, one of the guys that I follow, and he always talks about it has to work or it has to work. And that's that's the point that I'm at in my life as well. I know that, um, of course, working in, the, in working with the state and that kind of thing, and of course, 
um, helping folks with Medicaid, food stamp applications. I used to work at that office as well, doing all these types of things. And I know what kind of benefits. I'm not going to qualify for any of those things once I, of course, whenever I get older, whether I'm working at a job or not, or retiring from my own real estate business or coaching business or whatever it is, I'm not going to be able to apply for any of those things. Food stamps, the Medicaid, the, well, I don't have any kids, but like daycare services, that kind of thing. I'm not going to be able to apply for that stuff. And like I said, for a lot of you all who are working, you're not going to be able to apply for that either. And he was just upset saying that it seems like those who don't work, who don't do shit with their life, always get all the benefits in the end. And like I told him, yeah, that's what it looks like as well. Those are on the same thing I've said before about Section 8 and all that kind of stuff as well. I've said that stuff way back in the day. And like I said, it used to piss me off all the time. But I, I stopped letting it piss me off and start working towards a goal and a plan that's going to get me out of that trap, I guess I put it that way, as far as not having to depend on those type of services. And knowing that since I've been working all this time, I'm not going to qualify for it any damn way. And I know a lot of you all know that if you have been working, well, at least here in Missouri, a lot of you, if you make, you're making over 904 a month in your income once you retire and once you get disabled, that kind of thing. You're not going to be able to apply for Medicaid, and if you do, um, I get, but, and if you do, you're going to have to pay a hefty spend down or a copay every month just for them to activate your Medicaid, just so you can have some of those um, medic medical services paid for. So that's why I say I'm doing this video for y'all this morning. Just make sure that you keep that in mind when it comes to, of course, work. I'm not saying that you cannot work. Like I said before, everybody's not cut out for having a business. Some people don't have the mindset to be an entrepreneur. Don't care about being entrepreneurs, and they're damn good second, um, I guess, runner-up people. I guess I put it that way, vice presidents and all these kind of things and co-CEOs or whatever, whatever kind of title you want to give them. They're damn good secretaries or damn good workers and that kind of thing. We need that in this country too. But like I said, some people just aren't cut out for business. And But for those who are, make sure that you, actually for both of you all, just make sure that you know that when it comes time for you to retire or come or something happens or you're disabled, that kind of thing, just keep in time a lot. I mean, keep in mind if you worked a lot of time, a lot of times you will not be approved for the Medicaid services so that your medical bills can be knocked down and so that you can qualify for home health care services and adult daycare services and all those types of things different therapies and um, nursing home stays and all that kind of stuff just keep that in mind y'all that's why I, that's why lately I have been talking about uh, making sure that you of course look um, look into a business whether it's a home business that kind of thing I'm definitely gonna be pushing that more as well not just because I'm with bedroom candy that has nothing to do with it that's just a, a, a side business I have but the coaching business that I have that's of course the main business I'm looking to of course transition into and like I said definitely having some type of business that you can of course either transition into or have as a um, part-time business at home that you're working just to have that extra income like I said I'm into real estate as well me and my partner we're actually looking for some property right now like I said those are the things that we're looking into and that we know that's going to be another stream of income in the future I guess I put it that way as well once we get the building and get everything going all that kind of stuff like I said that's what we're looking at and of course I'm wholesaling trying to continue the wholesaling and that kind of thing as well and you all may not even know but I also sell mobile homes and I guess buy sell and fix up mobile homes and stuff like that as well haven't had my first one yet but I'm working on that y'all tell y'all that right now but like i said definitely those are the things that, that i that i guess that i'm doing and we're doing trying to make sure that we have some extended income past our work income income that we can rely on once we do of course stop working and that kind of thing as well i um well i gave myself a deadline timeline i got to put it up here on my damn vision board y'all see part of the vision board over here but like I said, that de that's definitely something that has to go up there so I can see that every single day to remind myself, you only got this much time. It has to work or it has to work, just like Neo said. And like I said, that sticks with me every single day. I have this little sticky note on my desk. When I go to work every day, I'm looking right at this little sticky note that says purpose with big old letters. <laughs> and then I have right up under that, um, I'm working for, um, what, what does it say? Oh, I'm building somebody else's dream because I'm working for somebody else. Then right up under that, of course, which I know my job is my main investor right now to, of course, help me create these other side businesses and stuff like that. Like I said, that's how I've been envisioning things and been seeing things. But, I'm, of course, like I said before, it has to work or it has to work. And I'm just telling you all, if you are looking to, of course, have some, some type of income when you, of course, retire or when you're disabled or that kind of thing or can't work anymore, whatever the case is, just keep in mind that you're not going to qualify, especially if you worked a lot for all those 
benefits that you see free things that folks are getting out here. I put it that way. A lot of times they haven't worked. They haven't did anything so they can get all those free items, food stamps, Medicaid, Section 8, low income housing. You ain't got to pay for nothing really. So, I mean, like I said, we have to pay for all that. And like I said, he was just very upset about him and his wife about having put, put all this money into this system. And then now they can't even get anything. They can't even get food stamps, y'all. $3,000 a month for a couple, that is not, I mean, you can live off that, yes, but when you're having bills and all these kind of things going on, you can't afford to pay almost $2,000 a month in Medicaid just to get medical services for adult daycare, home health care services, that kind of thing. But that is the reality for a lot of people out here, y'all. Like I said, y'all may not realize that. I've seen the entire spectrum, actually from birth all the way up to death, because I, I've worked in all those kind of sectors with our youth, with our families, with our teens, with our young adults, with our adults, and that kind of thing. Like I said, I've seen the entire spectrum, and I know how I, I, I know how this whole system goes. So I'm just here to tell y'all that this morning. Just make sure y'all are being mindful about that. Like I said, whatever kind of business you want to set up, I'll be talking more about business on this page just to let you know that. And that's why I've been doing some of these videos and that kind of thing and empowerment and encouragement videos, that kind of thing as well. Just to let y'all know that you can do the same thing that I'm doing. You can do this too. It, I'm, it's, I mean, yes, it's going to be a lot. Yes, you're going to have to come home from work and work another four or five hours in your business or how many ever hours you want to have set up, an hour, whatever it is for your business. But like I said, yes, you will have to do that. But like I said, I will talk to y'all more about that as well in another video. But I just want to make sure that y'all know to start thinking about some other stream of income, something that's going to, of course, be passive if you can, um, well, passive to me, because you still have to do work for passive income, but just make sure that it's not actually a full-time job that you're going to. That's actually not passive at all, but I mean, like in real estate, you're selling courses, you're doing coaching, whatever you're doing, something that's automatic so that you wouldn't have to put much time and effort into it, I guess I put it that way. That's to me what passive income is. You still got to put time and energy into it, but it may just be an hour a week. It may not even be that much time. Stocks, if you want to look at stocks, whatever you want to look into, look into those things. Just make sure that you have some type of income that can, of course, that can of course support and sustain you for the rest of your life, I guess I put it that way, whether you 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 um, ha have a job that you've lost or whether you're at retirement age or whether you're, um, let me see, like I said, become disabled for some reason, get illnesses or you just get over 65, that kind of, whatever it is, just make sure that you have some type of income coming in that can sustain you and that you can do, I guess I put it that way. So with that, I want to get off this video. I want to say thank you all for tuning in. Um, everybody have a great day. Take care, y'all.